Hello everyone. Williston, North Dakota, October 27th. It's uh, 1.30 p.m. 26 degrees out. There was some blowing snow about a half hour ago. Been conducting my uh, cold weather test of the camper, the Rolling Hotel. And uh, it's been about two weeks. Things are going miserably. Every other day, something else has to be done to try and winterize the camper. And things that I have winterized and done have to be redone. So it's uh, my favorite thing, double work. I hate double work. Currently, the water line has froze again. Late last night, I heard a sound like something blowing, like a tarp or a blanket in the wind, because the wind's been going once again for two days straight at its usual 20, 30 miles an hour, with no, no stopping. It just drives you insane. You cannot go outside and do anything without the door ripping open, without putting something on the tail gate of the truck and it having to blow 100 feet down the way here in this RV resort. It would be extremely difficult if I wasn't at this RV park because I would have to have the stove blow the camera there running constantly. Uh, as you can see, I have my 1500 watt heater running constantly here and I'm just dying to see what the electric bill is going to be. If I set the temperature on this to low, it'll be about 45, which it was this morning when I woke up. And surprisingly, I'm surprised, I'm actually acclimated to it, I guess would be the word. So when I get up, I really didn't even know it was 45 degrees in here. Uh, that may also be because I was getting angry because I turned on the faucet and no water came out because the pipes are frozen again. <clears throat> Which means that in a little while I got to go outside and turn off the actual um, water valve because I don't want the pipes bursting. So I was wondering why the pipes froze and uh, <laughs> I found out what that blowing tarp sound was late last night. So the wind is uh, so bad that uh, originally I went up on a roof just to make sure the solar panels didn't blow off. And because there's only about an inch gap between the roof and the solar panels, not much wind gets underneath them to throw them off. So I was very happy to, you know, grab them, shake them. They were, they're on there great, not loose. However, what I didn't think about, the tarp that's underneath the underbelly of the trailer that holds the uh, batting, the insulation in, something's going on. I haven't been outside yet because it's nasty out and uh, you have to get fully prepared just to go outside. Uh, I'm, it's been three, four years since cold weather. I actually am not used to and I hate putting on like eight layers of clothes, the boots, the socks, the shirt, the other shirt, the sweatshirt, the coat. It's, it's, anytime you go outside, you gotta do that. Then you come inside, you're too hot, you gotta take it off. So I haven't gone outside and looked under the trailer. But what I have done was I went in the cabinet underneath the sink. When I opened the cabinet door, I saw daylight. That's bad. When you see light coming in from a closed cabinet, it's so angry. I'll show you. I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. So I just had a cup of coffee. I actually cannot rinse my cup of coffee cup out because there's no water. It is frozen. I will turn it on right now for you. That's the frozen pipe. So made some more tea, starting to stay warm. So the kettle is held under here. So I went like this to get the kettle out to make coffee about an hour ago when I got up. And I said, why the heck can I see daylight? So that's the drain pipe right there that comes from the from the sink down below the cabinet here through all the pots and pans 
and uh, yeah, I can see, I can see the dirt gravel. So, <clears throat> what that tells me is the uh, noise I heard is the insulation has ripped off from the uh, wind that does not stop here. Also, this right above me is driving me nuts. So, after a while, this gets this gets cold, and it just pops off. Wind comes through. Wind comes into the camper. Kind of scared to leave. If I was going to leave all day and leave that thing running, kind of scared because you know I don't want to start a fire. The people in the RV park just said last year was the first time they actually had an RV burn to the ground. Their first fire here. You know, th this thing could fall off the ceiling, fall into that. Some can come off the wall here. I did do a pretty good job of this, the insulation. Uh, oh, this is the other thing. I had this off. This this was off yesterday. This had been off for a couple days. I just put it back on there. You're probably like, why did you put it back on there? I just tucked it up here. It just comes right off. The wind is coming from that direction right there. It's coming towards me. The blowing snow about a half hour ago literally was coming through the window right here. So you have the the lock. You pull it, slide it open, in comes the ridiculous wind. There was snow blowing in behind the lock here. I can actually feel the cold air. I can feel it. There was snow blowing in and then landing right here. I couldn't believe it. I was watching it. So I threw so I threw this on there. It's it's driving me berserk. So, uh, I originally had that super taped up. It was completely covered on the outside and inside. And what happened was uh, I ended up ripping it all off. Uh, I put it, let me see, I put it right here. <laughs> it's, it's actually, I just re-moved it over. Because what happened was I started getting like claustrophobic. Uh, it's, you know, it's cold out. You really don't go outside from the camper. So I'm sitting in here and like I felt like stuffed up and just sucks being trapped in here with all the windows covered you know and I just started getting these thoughts in my head like oh you know maybe there's no airflow maybe actually you know I had the stove going cooking a um cooking some chicken breast the other night I'm like you know what maybe I'm like asphyxiating myself here with the freaking it's using up the oxygen so that's why I took that off the window but it's gonna have to go back on there because the wind right now is coming through the crack there and that's really bad for keeping it warm in here uh, it's really bad when snow actually is coming through the crack. That's how bad the crack is that snow with the heavy blowing wind is coming through the crack of the window. It's just going to pile up there, freeze, make things worse. So <sighs> There's other problems up here in the Bakken oil fields of northern Dakota. Uh, see all those water bottles? So I have the zero water right here. I am currently trying to dry it out to save it because that's a $23 filter. Uh, you cannot, you can water up here. Excuse my language. Uh, I drank the water for the first week. Uh, I then usually mix a little bit of water with my Gatorade. So I'll, I'll fill, you know, this, this to Gatorade up here, or Powerade, and the rest with water. I don't like drinking it full, full throttle, because it's too much sugar for me. So, it had this horrible taste. It had like a, like a, like a carbonated coca-cola taste and I was like why so I shook the bottle I shook the bottle and the bottle was carbonated Powerade is not carbonated tap water is not carbonated it was carbonated so <laughs> there's some type of gas in the water and it tastes horrible it was not there the first week the second week it was there it comes and goes what is it I don't know I'm assuming the uh, the fracking the shale is releasing the natural gas up into the water table and it's it's in the well water here. Also, I had to look up the other problem with the water is the it smelled and tasted like fish. And I said, what is going on? I thought this was well water. The city of Williston gets its water from the Missouri River. We're right on the Missouri River. Uh, northernmost part of it pretty much. 
So I said, oh, all the water must taste like fish because it's coming from that nasty mud brown river water. But then I thought, I'm like, well, when I checked in here, she said the water's soft water. She said it's well water. So I started Googling it, and I said, you know, if you got decaying matter or something in your well or bacteria, it can smell like fish. It's disgusting. I made green tea, and I went to drink it, just like this, just like this green tea here. Of course, this is this is bottled water. I got the garbage right here. It's uh, spring water. But uh, I made green tea like this. I went to taste it with the tap water, and I was like, I got so mad because I thought, I'm like, oh, I bought those cheap Chinese green tea bags. I said, ah, China, they put like fish guts or something in the green tea leaves. Turns out, no, it ain't, it ain't China, it's the, uh, it's the tap water here. So, uh, we're gonna go outside and for the first time look under the RV and see how bad the wind has ripped that off. <clears throat> I don't think duct tape holds too good in 26 degree weather. It's gonna be a huge project just to get it back on there. I can tell already. It's We'll be back. Alright people, I just put my shoes on, hat and everything. We're going to go outside and see what the damage is underneath the camper. It's been five minutes since the last scene. Um, one other thing I want to mention is the camera does not pick up the nuances. So, when I just reviewed my last eight minute clip, you cannot tell the wind is blowing outside. It's you cannot tell the camper is shaking from the wind. Like it doesn't pick up at all. So I'm gonna open that door and just let it open to give you an idea of what's going on outside. Because I know when I pointed that camera out the window, it looked like it was like sunny 75 degree day out. It's not, it's not. Watch. We're gonna go look under the camper, we're gonna open that door and you're gonna see. Always keep your camper locked. You can feel the air coming through this door.
wild cat out here. It's no good. A lot of stuff going on here. Got a guy in the truck watching me, see what I'm doing. As you can see the rest of this trailer park here. that is.